let's assume x odd y odd so if x is odd y is odd this will become odd into odd to the power anything is odd again odd to the power anything is odd and odd minus odd is even so odd into even is even so the first value gives me a confirmed even imagine if y x is an odd and y is an even number then even into anything is again even so what is the question is this value odd i'll repeat if i take x as an odd number then i can take y as an odd or even number when i take x as odd let's take y also as odd so odd into odd to the power anything is always odd again odd to the power anything is always odd they are positive integers so nothing will change odd minus odd whether it is positive or negative it doesn't matter odd minus odd is even even into odd is going to be even if y is an even number in that case it will be even into whatever i don't care now even into anything is even so what is the question is this odd i can get a guaranteed answer no okay so please understand this i can get a guaranteed answer no so in this case if i have this i have a confirmed no answer <coughs> and this will be <laughs> because when x is odd and y is odd the entire expression is even when x is uh, odd and y is even the entire expression is again even so the entire expression is never odd is this odd your ass it is never odd so i get a confirmed answer now if y is even we just saw if y is even anything into y will be even so this is anyway subset of this so this will make sure the answer is always even is the answer odd i'll get a confirmed no answer confirmed no is again sufficient and the correct answer as you gave for the first question is this one are you surprised anyone kuch bologe aap kaisa lag raha hai kya hua shocking lag raha hai na itna tough nahi hai lekin tricky hai trap based hai ye exam tough bilkul bhi nahi hai kahin se i mean after this will be laughing that oh i could make this mistake main maine ye galti kiya mera je mein rank tha main itd mein pad raha hu maine ye galti kiya aapko hansi aayegi lekin us din galat ho sakta hai ye dhyan and that is why this exam is a very highly trap based exam let's see another question so please solve this i hope you have marked i'll still give you 30 seconds revisit your answer and let's see what you get here so if you solved you would have got this as minus 2 less than z less than 2 so z could be anything it could be 0 it could be 1 it could be 1 by 2 so you are asked what is the value of z i don't have a fixed answer so the first statement is definitely not sufficient now let's see the second statement all of you pay attention here or you'll learn something that otherwise will skip your attention just this so i can write this as z or minus z so z is equal to 3z minus 2 Sorry about this. Uh, and minus z is equal to three z minus two. When I solve, I get z equal to one here. When I solve this, I get z equal to one by two here. So what is my first instinctive answer? I don't have a unique answer because z equal to one is also satisfying one by two. But we know one thing that the final value of a mod cannot be negative. If I substitute one here. will it satisfy here or not 1 equal to 3 minus 2 definitely so this is a valid root if i substitute 1 by 2 here 1 by 2 equal to 3 into 1 by 2 1.5 minus 2 so 1 by 2 is equal to minus 1 by 2 this does not satisfy <laughs> this is an invalid root so z has only one valid answer from the second statement not two answers so if it has only one answer in that case statement 2 is sufficient and my answer is b not e who you would have probably thought of e as the answer because you thought obviously there are two values of z so we have to be very careful in these questions 
Any doubt anybody has, you can always ask me. Raise your hand and ask me at any level. I'll explain it again. Yes, please. Yeah. So, z equal to 3z minus 2 minus z is equal to 3z minus 2. If I solve this, I get z equal to 1. If I solve this, I get z is equal to 1 by 2. But if I call it a root, it must satisfy the original equation. <laughs> Does it satisfy the original equation? Z equal to 1? Yes. But z equal to 1 by 2? No. It actually doesn't satisfy. So it is an invalid root. It looks like a valid root to us. And we thought there were two values of z, whereas there is only one value of z. So if I get only one value of z, z equal to 1, then it is sufficient because that is what is asked. What is the value of z? So the answer is B because statement 2 alone gives me the answer. So as you will see, the exam does trap you quite strangely. Let's see. Okay. I'll give you some time. Let me just see what you will do here. You may have solved it already, but reconsider this. Let's see. Maybe 30 seconds to 60 seconds more and then we can discuss a bit of language. Alright, good enough time. I think it's not much to think about, but the only problem is we, if we assume x is an integer, we'll once again go wrong. Nobody tells you that x is an integer. x is a positive number. It could be a decimal also. So, I can take from the first statement, x cube equal to 11 also, or x cube equal to 27 also, or x cube equal to 99 also, and every other number. So, x will have multiple answers. x could be cube root of 11, cube root of 13, cube root of 15. It could be 3 and it could be up to cube root of 99. <laughs> Once again, the first statement is not sufficient. I hope you are getting this. It's very easy. Okay, Once you get the answer, it looks so easy after that. But yes, in the same way, when I look at statement 2, I don't look at statement number 1. So, x to the power of 4 could be 11 or 13 or 15 or 81 or 99. So, x could be 4th root of 11 or here x could have been cube root of 25. We just don't know. So, again, we do not have a unique answer. So, you reject this as well. First and second alone are not sufficient. Now, you have to think when you combine, please pay attention. This will be a little tricky. If you have x cube and x4 both as integers, is x supposed to be an integer or a fraction or an irrational number or which, what is it? x must be an integer only or not an integer? So, so, yeah, jaldi bit of. I have something to show you here. Let's see. All of you pay attention. Suppose I take x cube as 11 or 13 like this. And I want x to the power 4 also as an integer. So, this is cube root of 11. 11 into cube root of 11 is not an integer. So, the only place where both are integers is this. The only place where both are integers is when x is equal to 3, which you may have guessed from the first or the second statement only. But the answer will be after combining, not before combining. So, the correct answer here is C. Don't worry about it, it's very easy to learn, but initially it does go wrong for the best of us. I had a student called Akshay Goyal, you should look him up, he was from IIT Kharagpur of 2003, IIT JE exam time. He had AIR 1 in math. In math, uh, all India rank 1, he went to KGP for whatever thing. Maybe his overall rank was not great, but math rank 1. 
he long back sat in one of my classes of data sufficiency he had 9 out of 10 mistakes matlab kaisa lagega main aiir 1 leke aaya hu iit je hi mein tab to aur tough hota tha abhi to bahut aasan kar diya us time comparative you will disagree probably no but it was very very difficult at some point you know suicides and so on what all happened in university अभी भी चल रहा है इतने लोगों ने तो नहीं किया जितनों को मैं देख रहा हूँ ओके सो द आइडिया इज दिस दैट गाय गॉट नाइन आउट ऑफ टेन रॉन्ग दैट डजेंट नीड इट डिंट इंप्रूव ही इंप्रूव वेरी क्विकली बिकॉज ऑल यू नीड इज दिस ट्रिगर दैट देर आर ट्रैप्स इन दैट आई कैन हैंडल दिस वन साइड टॉट ऑल राइट सो लेट्स सी आई आल्सो हैव अ क्वेश्चन इन प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग जस्ट वन क्वेश्चन जस्ट टू गिव यू एन आइडिया एज टू व्हाट दिस एग्जाम डस नंबर 5 प्लीज मार्क एन आंसर not directly but their concept i mean pattern repeats data will not repeat that if you watch the time but you can tell from that okay so we will be able to do okay जनरल <laughs> 